Well, good hump day evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great hump day. Hope you've been humping, getting over the hump, or doing whatever you do when it's hump day. I am, wow, I am in awe because it is literally a week and a day away from the NFL draft. In fact, it's only 141 days until the NFL season, believe it or not. Um, it's crazy how fast time goes, and maybe it's because I'm getting old. And as you get older, you realize there's a lot of mileage behind you and not so much in front of you. So as we get ready, I'm, I'm imagining that right now, exactly a week from this moment, that it'll be me, game time, Primetime and David Wiley, Chef David, in Detroit, having a few drinks, live streaming, and dreaming about the Cowboys having the perfect draft that brings us a Super Bowl. Because that's all we got. You know, I was on with Dan Salio, our, our first um, show together, and um, he kind of hit, hit me and the Cowboys kind of hard. He literally said that Dak Prescott will never be able to win a Super Bowl. Well, um, you know, I, it kind of caught me off guard, and I didn't really respond to it. But, you know, again, this was the first time I'm getting in there. I, I will be throwing some haymakers at him and all that because I don't think that Jalen Hurts is going to win a Super Bowl. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who's in his mama's basement, as they say, without a journalism degree. Here's the thing to me is, one, Stephen Jones is full of crap. And number two, the Dallas Cowboys are going to need to trade back. Um, I'm not a big fan of trading up in the first round. I think it risks too much when you do that. And the Cowboys have had some success. The very first draft that I got to go to was 2012, before there was a draft city, before it was all inclusive for the fans and things like that. That was the last one they had in Radio City before they moved the draft to uh, Chicago. I was outside of Radio City Music Hall when the Dallas Cowboys traded back with the San Francisco 49ers. They moved back, I want to say, three or four spots. I, I probably should look it up and remember exactly where it was. But they moved back, and they ended up taking Travis Frederick. They ended up picking up a third-round pick, the third round pick they used on Terrence Williams, who actually played pretty good for us. Because basically, you got an all pro center and you got a starting wide receiver, which is pretty good. And I can look back and say the Cowboys moved back with Micah Parsons and ended up getting a third round pick that they used for Golston. Golston, I believe, is going to get more playing time this year and get more of an opportunity. And where the Cowboys are right now, with their lack of movement in free agency, they're going to need to get more bodies. In this draft, there's not a lot of players that you, unless you're going for a quarterback. If you're going for a quarterback, then all bets are off. There's not a lot of super players that you want to reach for, where you look at saying, I'm going to take a first and a second or a couple of firsts to move up for, unless you're going for a quarterback. I know a lot of y'all say, well, they need to go for a quarterback. Well, they're not going for a quarterback. Let's be real here. The thing with the Cowboys is this. They like to get the number one prospect at a position. They do good with that. Drafting at 24, you're not getting a quarterback. You're not getting the wide receiver. You're not getting the left tackle. You're not getting the edge rusher. Those positions will be knee deep by the time you get to 24. Guard, you might have a chance at a guard, starting quality guard. Center, a guy they seem to like quite a bit is uh, Powers. Powers is a guy you could look at and say, we can plug him in and play right now. Cowboys, if they move back two, three, four spots, probably can get him, get your starting center, and maybe get a third-round pick. 
this draft, and if you move a little further back, maybe you end up getting a second. This draft is conceivable that if you do that, that you might be able to get two starting caliber offensive linemen. Or you might have a better chance at getting your running back. Or maybe getting a good defensive lineman. That is going to be the best hope and scenario. Because the way I look at a draft is this. If you can get an impact player and get another starter, get some depth and a special team standout guy, you've had a great draft. Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough for the Cowboys this year. Unless... The Cowboys are going to dig deep into free agency, the next wave, bottom basement shopping. Now, let's go on to the second part here. NFL Live with Stephen Jones and his mentality about paying uh, players and why they're not spending money. Everybody uh, can have their own definition of what that means, but I've never not known us to be all in, nor have I known anybody we compete against not to be all in. Doesn't mean it happens overnight, but when you're wanting to sign uh, players like Dak and, and Micah and CD, then, uh, you know, that certainly uh, you have to hold money back if you want to have a realistic chance at signing those guys. Okay. What is your biggest concern, Logan, with the last? Can we call bullshit right here? Can we call bullshit right here? Here's the reality. You have Dak Prescott at $55 million contract. That price for the season is not going to go up if you sign him to a new contract. At this moment, you have $100 million in cap space for next year. $100 million. By doing Dak Prescott's contract now, you can get yourself some cap space. C.D. Lamb is at 17.8. 17.8. I want you to understand something. They redid Devontae Smith's contract. Devontae Smith is not anywhere near, you know, they put three years, $25 million. I believe he's a 6 or $7 million cap hit this year, and I think a, a $9 million next year. Less than what we're paying in dead money. For Michael Gallup. I want you to let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in for a second. We're paying more dead money on Michael Gallup than the Eagles are for Devontae Smith this year. Yeah, go on. Lack of additions for the Cowboys in this offseason. Look, I don't see all in at all. And, um, you know, they just haven't brought anything in. Uh, Dak is at his best when he has offensive line play. The offensive line is aging, and when they can run the what ball. What quarterback I don't is see it? Prime Zeke. I don't see Tony, Tony, Tony Pollard. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lack of a running game around Dak. Dak wants to get the ball out on time. He doesn't have the protection to do it. They got to play CD. They got to play Micah. That just has to happen. They don't have the weapons around Dak. I don't see anything different coming from the Cowboys this year. Boogie, Logan Ryan ain't lying. Good to see you, Logan. <laughs> that rhymed. Listen, man. Wagyu. <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that gets beat up about the Cowboys, but always truly keep it honest. And this team is is worse, and they haven't made a legit run at trying to win a Super Bowl, in my opinion. When you, and I can't wait to hear Lou with this because he has front office experience. But when you think about Dallas, right, you got the quarterback salary that's at $55 million. You got to pay Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb. And over these years, when you've had an offensive line intact, when you've had a good running game, when you've had weapons on the outside, you've accomplished nothing. So now you're worse and you were, based on Stephen Jones, you had an inability to make moves for free agents that could potentially put you right back in that conversation in the upper echelon of the NFC and potentially trying to make a Super Bowl run. And herein lies the other problem, because I want to hear Lou. Other teams got better, i.e. the Green Bay Packers. You look at what the San Francisco 49ers continue to do. You look at the AFC side and see teams continue to build. So it's not just about Dallas. It's about other good teams got better in the offseason. And we sit here talking about how are they going to pay the guys that's in the building. You guys have both kind of really hit the nail on the head about with this football team. The Cowboys know, Stephen Jones knows, Jerry Jones knows what people are talking about when they say you're all in or you're not all in. 
Everybody knows that you would like to re-sign your best players when you draft them and then they wind yeah. up coming up for contract number two. Everybody knows you'd like to go ahead and reward those guys because that means that you wound up drafting the right guys in the first place. So that doesn't that doesn't count as being all in on CD, being all in on Micah, and being all in on Dak. Every every fan in America would be all in on those guys. They're pretty good players. What we're <laughs> talking about is are you making meaningful additions to your football team to keep pace with what everyone else is doing in your division, in your conference, and in the league overall? And look, Logan, you laid it out perfectly. I can't take it anymore. It has worn me out. But at least we got the draft. Because that's all we got. I'm Mark Holmes, and well... <laughs>